This video covers transpiration, or how plants lose water. In a separate video on photosynthesis, I explained how plants can capture energy from the sun, convert it to sugar, and store the sugar until they need energy. And when they do need the energy, the reverse reaction occurs, and that's called respiration. Being able to create, store, and then liquidate your own energy source is great, but like anything else, there's going to be trade-offs. A major one is water loss, which is also known as transpiration. In order to photosynthesize, plants need to get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They open up pores on their leaves called stomata, which allows the carbon dioxide to enter the leaf, but at the same time, water exits the leaf. The plant isn't able to stop the water from leaving. You may already know the word evaporation, which describes water loss. Specifically, it describes when water changes from a liquid state to a gas state. And transpiration is more specifically having that evaporation off of plants. When you hear people discuss plant water usage, you'll also run across the term evapotranspiration. This is a combination of water loss off of plants and from other surfaces like the soil or bodies of water. So let's jump to the bottom of the plant where the roots are absorbing water. The absorption happens through osmosis, which describes a movement of water from an area that has fewer dissolved substances called solutes through a membrane to an area that has more dissolved solutes. I'm going to exchange the word solute for salts so that it's easier to explain. So you can also think of it as water moving from a less salty solution across a membrane to a more salty solution so that both sides can eventually come into equilibrium. And the key factor here is osmosis when it's just the water moving across that membrane. Um, the, the salts can't go the opposite direction and balance it out that way. If the membrane was not there, then the two solutions can just mix and that's called diffusion. Plants rely on osmosis to get water from their outside environment. They can actively move solutes into their roots, and then the water will naturally flow in from outside. If there's more solutes in the soil, or if there's less water, the plant will have to spend more energy getting that same amount of water. So applying fertilizer to a stressed tree can be counterproductive, unless the reason why that tree is stressed is because it's missing that nutrient. When fertilizer is applied, it dissolves in water, and you may actually increase the solutes outside in the soil compared to what's inside the plant. And when that happens, the water may actually get pulled out of the plant. It's a much better idea to focus on making sure that the plant has the proper growing conditions and is properly irrigated before you start looking at fertilizer. So now the water is inside the root. Water molecules have a really strong connection to one another and they stay linked. They move upwards to the leaves through the xylem, which is the conducting tissue of the plant. You can imagine the xylem as a straw that allows for a continuous connected movement of water to the top. And as the water evaporates or transpires from the leaves, it helps to pull water up from the roots. So the transpiration itself is also a driver for that water movement. Let's jump up to the top of the tree to the leaves. Leaves have these pores in them called stomata. And the singular form of stomata is a stoma. The pore has a pair of guard cells that flank it. And the plant is able to move solutes into those guard cells, which then draws in water. When the water enters, they puff up like little sausages, and the center opens to form a gap. And when the water leaves the guard cells, they deflate and they close up that pore. This process is also dependent on osmosis. Water loss will be higher when it's hot or when it's windy. And of course, plants are going to come up with ways to reduce the amount of water that they lose. Leaves have a waxy layer on top called the cuticle, which is like a physical barrier to reduce water loss. Stomata might also be located on the underside of the leaf where they're a little bit more protected from the direct sun and from wind. Some leaves are hairy, 
which also serves to slow down that air movement right around those stomata. In more extreme environments, like in the desert, the leaves might be highly reduced. Take in cactus, for example. What you might think of as being the leaf, the pad, is actually a, a stem that can photosynthesize. The actual leaf has been converted into a spine. Some plants will also change their photosynthesis, where part of photosynthesis happens during the day, but the part where the stomata open to bring in carbon dioxide happens at night. You might be wondering, why don't plants just keep their stomata closed during the day? Photosynthesis is still a reaction that requires light, and so they do have to open them to bring in carbon dioxide. Having that water loss also does have a benefit for the plant. It helps to keep the leaves cool. If a plant keeps those stomates closed, the leaf could overheat and become sunburned. This is a process called evaporative cooling, and that's how swamp coolers work, by moving air over a moist surface. If you've ever walked by a lawn on a hot day and felt a cool burst of air, that's the transpiration from the plant. Plants will also do gas exchange through lenticels, which are not part of the leaf. They're soft, spongy areas that allow gases and water to move between a plant and its environment. They're always open and they cannot be closed like stomata can. The word lenticel means lens shaped, and so you'll often see that form. On trees, lenticels are found on the bark, and they're especially obvious on cherries birches, and plums. They can also be found on fruits like apple and underground plant parts like potatoes. There are commercially available products called antitranspirants, which seek to reduce the amount of transpiration that a plant does. It can be used during hot temperatures as well as harsh winters, and it increases the thickness of the cuticle, which reduces water loss. It should be noted that by decreasing transpiration, you also decrease carbon dioxide uptake, which affects photosynthesis. Transpiration is a natural process that may cause some plants stress if they're not able to take up enough water, but it's a vital process that, despite its drawbacks, is necessary for plant life.